up and we're going to set the recording that set up uh all the technology is in place we made it marie we're here <laughs> <laughs> so um hi everyone thank you for taking some time out of your uh hopefully beautiful evening and uh to spend some time with us uh, this is a topic that is very, very important to me, and obviously it's something that's very, very important to Marie as well. Um, I had my own experience with grief uh, when uh, both of my parents transitioned within six months of each other, and um, so that was my experience with it. And so I understand how powerful grief can be and the impact that that can have. So um when i saw i've i've met marie virtually a, a few times and i uh, saw that she had written a book and she was doing all these amazing things about um being a widow and and how that impacted her life and how she was able to use that so i was so excited when she said yes that she would do this for me and be here um so she is now a best-selling author she is a speaker uh she's also a functional medicine health coach uh, she has a passion for helping and inspiring widows and widowers to live well through things like clean eating and laughing more, you know, finding something to smile about every day and perhaps maybe even finding love again. So thank you, Marie, for coming and sharing some time with us. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you, Jen. It's a pleasure. Yeah. So you are living proof, right, that you're... Uh, your book title is Seven Steps to Healing After Loss, right? And you're you're the living proof that this can work. And um, so tell us a little bit about how that experience was life-changing for you. So after Dave died almost four years ago now, I was lying on the floor with open, empty arms wondering, who is I going to take care of now? Mm. And the answer came back quickly, you silly. And at the time I was carrying around 30 pounds of weight for, that I'd carried around for 20 years. I thought I was healthy, but I was really just fit from working out with a trainer for seven years and walking the golf course, but I wasn't healthy. Mm -hmm. And I was on all kinds of prescription meds. I was pre-diabetic, so I met Foreman for that, on antidepressants, because that's the first thing they give a widow. The mm -hmm. second thing they give them is sleeping pills. Mm -hmm. And um, I was also, uh, uh, on meds for cholesterol and high blood pressure. And mm. all this time I thought, why, there's gotta be a uh, get to the root cause. How do you get to the root cause of why you're on all these meds? And the other thing that really bugged me is once you go on a prescription med, there is no exit strategy for ever coming off. Mm -hmm. So I discovered functional medicine and it was the first time anybody took a family history and uncovered rampant autoimmune disease running through the whole family. Mm. So it was eye-opening. And even for me, they diagnosed me with autoimmune hep hepatitis. And of course, I had to ask Dr. Google what the heck that was. Dr. Google. And, uh, <laughs> and came up with, you know, all this weird stuff. It, you know, it was part of the fatty liver or something was going on. And they wanted to take a liver biopsy. And I said, no way. And then they, it was a misdiagnosis. They don't, just kidding. There's really nothing wrong, um, except I had terrible gut issues as well. So through all that and discovering functional medicine, I was put on the, um, the essentials program through the Living Proof Institute. I flew up to Toronto and, uh, and within six weeks, Jen, within six short weeks, just by changing my food preferences, I shed those 30 pounds. Mm -hmm. I came off all of my medications and the widow fog lifted, the brain fog, was, the energy came back through the roof. And just by changing what I ate, it was amazing to me. Mm. Fascinating. That's it, it. Well, we, you know, we we talk about how powerful those things can be, right? But yeah. we've been so ingrained by the modern medical world that oh, well, that can't possibly make a difference. That can't possibly help. And here we are, right? It made yeah. a big impact. Yeah. And what's the percentage of obesity in the U.S.? Is it? It's a staggering number of it people is. that are overweight. And, and, you know, I'm a product of the Betty Crocker generation. So mom used to bake cakes from scratch, right? But mm -hmm. not after Betty Crocker came out. Oh my goodness, a cake in 10 minutes. Let's eat from, eat from a box. TV dinners, there are eight, eight kids and TV dinners, let's do 10 for a dollar. It's like incredible. Yeah. What we You're one of eight kids? Yes. I'm one of nine. 
Wow. What are the odds of that? We're both big family kids. So what, yeah. where are you in the lineage? Where are you in the line? Right in the middle. Right in the middle. Right in the middle. Okay. Yeah. Nice. And how about you? Uh, well, there were three. And then the doctors told my mom, you're never going to have any more kids. You know, don't worry about it. And then uh, so there was nine and almost 10 years. And then she got pregnant with me and they're like, oh, it's a miracle. It's wonderful. <laughs> and then five more after me. And she's like, all right, enough's enough. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I, I think my mom was 45 when the doctor finally said, uh, Faye, you might want to stop doing this. Right. <laughs> yeah. And you know, my we all we all grew up in a thousand square foot house, 10 of us in a thousand square foot house, mm. one shower. Nice. Those are the those were the days, right? <laughs> those were the days. <laughs> um, so what what other tools did you use um, when you were going through this? And, you know, I, I some of those things I know just from conversation and getting to know you, you you use those tools to actually write your book, which I am so intimidated about doing. I've been playing around with it for so long and I've been watching. Well, how did you do it? So share with us yes. what led to the book. So one of the things that I started after Dave died was a, a journal, and it was a great way to relive 30 years of memories and, and travels around the world. And, and Dave was a firefighter on that Toronto uh, Mississauga Fire Department. So there are funny stories from the firehouse like you wouldn't believe. And so I started journaling and it was so wonderful to smile again at the memories because that's really all we have left are memories. And I would go through pictures and it would trigger, oh my, I, were, I forgot this happened and, and I, I'd be flying for work. I was working at Oracle for uh, technology for 30 years. And I'd be flying and writing, you know, notes on every inch of a, a airplane napkin and post-it notes. And, and then after meditating, uh, I start, began meditation as a practice, which also helped just calm uh, the, the grief down and, uh, you know, settle with it. And, um, and one day after meditation, I discovered that, you know what? I think there's a book in here. And then the 12 chapters came. Mm. And this is about a year after I started. started. It's a three-year process. But, but I had a big vision board and I had the 12 chapters, which changed a little bit from then till now. But, but literally, John, this book started as a journal on post-it notes and napkins and, and um, a, a journaling book. And it was just a, a really a gratitude journal, grateful for all the stories and, and not just the funny ones and the sad ones, but also the, um, you know, the, the, the sad things about going through losing Dave and when we found out and the diagnosis and that, that marched through, um, you know, through his end, it was very therapeutic. Mm, mm, that is really powerful. And, you know, you talk about the gratitude piece of it, you know, and how powerful that can be because, you know, the more you're able to be in that gratitude space, not that we don't have to or not that it's not important to acknowledge the pain, right? And yes. the struggle and, and what that meant and the value that that had, but then the ability to leave it there and focus and put yourself in the place of gratitude, it completely shifts, you know, your mindset. It completely, it, it puts you in that place where now you can not only heal emotionally, but now you can start to heal or feel physically from the impact of that, right? Yes, yes, it was a... It was just an amazing, uh, amazing journey. And it, and it really is a journey. It's different for everybody. And on top of that, the same year I lost my mom. So um, I lost her to Alzheimer's and, and, and Dave to cancer. And um, I am a cook. I love to cook. I love to feed people. It's the Italian in me. And um, I went back to school, uh, what I thought was to learn more about nutrition. And I became a functional medicine health coach. And so functional medicine changed my, my health uh, by learning all of these tips and, and techniques and becoming a functional medicine health helped me articulate the seven steps to healing. So that was life transforming. Mm, that's powerful. So you have, you know, in the ways that you support um, men and women, widows and widowers in that process. So you have your awesome book, which they can find on Amazon or your website, mariescottwellness.com. And then uh, you also have your functional medicine services to yes. help them take it to the next level from that perspective. And then we were touching on that uh, you have retreats too, right? <laughs> yes, I do. We've got some really exciting things planned this year. And um, the, the, the retreat's coming up, coming up quite quickly at the end of March in Siesta Key. It's a beautiful healing beach. And 
Um, there's a, it, it's a magical place. And, and just to be uh, looking for a select group of, I've got three spots left, looking for a select group of widows uh, to join us, widows only this time, okay. uh, to join us and dive into the seven steps to healing because they really help me and, and Jen, once my, my heart, mind and body healed, uh, in walked love again. So, you know, my friend Lee said to me, he goes, how do you rate? He goes, not only did you have one great love in your life, but now you've got two and um, in walked Jeff Gordon into my heart. So it's an amazing uh, love story. And it's, you know, again, I'm living proof. The seven steps to healing really work and can help overcome this tremendous, uh, tremendous law. It's devastating. And um, uh, the seven steps of healing really it paves the way to shine a light in a dark place. Yes. And we've, and I've seen photos of your uh, amazing husband and the way you guys look at each other and the way you love each other. I've watched some of your videos with you cooking. You know, there was one where you were making, I think, spare ribs at the time or something like that. And, you know, just to see the joy, you yes. know, it, it, that you, um, that you have. And it gives, it, it really does, it, like you said, it's living proof that there is hope and that there is healing after that space. So, yes. and they can find information on your, the retreat on your website as well, right? Absolutely, yes. And also join my community because one of the first things I did after, after Dave died is I joined all of these widow support communities. And I will tell you that nobody knows what you're going through except other widows and widowers. It's, you know, losing a spouse is, a, is, is every single thing in your life is different. You mm -hmm. know, you are part of a couple, especially after 30 years, mm -hmm. you're part of a couple and that, that just gets ripped away from you. Mm -hmm. And every single thing is different. So, you know, I remember yeah. shopping the first time, you know, uh, shopping for one, I was in tears in the supermarket, one mm -hmm. piece of salmon and, and one filet and, um, you know, one piece of chicken, uh, mm -hmm. because I knew that if I didn't cook for myself, I'd feel like crap. And if I felt like crap, I wasn't want to, I wouldn't want to embrace life again. So it's all connected. It all boils back to healing yourself and mm -hmm. then healing your mind, body, and spirit. And you know, I, I saw that firsthand too after my mom. My mom was the first to pass and seeing my dad go through that process. And I really wish he would have embraced some resources like this, like what you're providing, you know, um, mm -hmm. and support because it it just it was devastating to him to this i i will tell you he the man died of a broken heart um and it's quite common it's that powerful yeah yeah you know so and um so some other ways uh, you said you were also speaking at camp widow yes oh my i'm so excited i i've been trying for two years and of course with covid many of the live events had been canceled and I'm so honored and excited to be have, to have been chosen uh, to be a presenter at Camp Widow on the Seven Steps to Healing. And Camp Widow is part of the Soaring Spirits organization. It's an incredible organization. I think there are up to 30,000, if not more, 30,000 strong. Wow. And, and um, staggering numbers. I mean, there's eight, almost 18 million widows and widowers in the U.S. and Canada alone. Mm -hmm. And so Soaring Spirits helps uh, connecting with other widows and widowers. And, and I will tell you that connection is so powerful because you can feel free to say, you know, I can't get out of bed this morning. You know, mm -hmm. has anybody experienced not being able to sleep for like a week and, and how do you overcome, you know, taking your wedding ring off? All of these mm -hmm. things are so specific to yeah. being a widow yeah. or widower. Mm -hmm. They give me chills. Uh, yeah, well, I am very grateful for you and I'm very grateful for what you're doing, because like I said, I, I would have so loved for my dad to have had that type of support and encouragement and um, community, like you said. So yes. be sure to join her community. Your community is on Facebook. Is that right? It is. Yes. In fact, you can find a link on my website as well. It's okay. the Marie Scott Widowhood to Wellness. And it's a vetted group of widows and widowers. I, uh, I ask everybody in there to please provide the um, obituary date. So they're completely vetted and safe, uh, verified widows and widowers in that group. And um, I share the seven steps to healing because it's, it's so important to heal yourself and, and feel better. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll leave you with one example. As I was going through the book, uh, my friend lost her, um, her mom 
and her, she described her dad as this great jovial man dying in a recliner. And that's so, that's so common in, in, in so many. And as we were uh, working through the seven steps, uh, we were talking every week and, and she was sharing them with her dad. And all of a sudden he started getting up out of the recliner, cooking for friends and family and getting out and smiling again and exercising. And he's even dating now. So the seven steps are that powerful. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, well, I, I, I'm so happy to hear that. I'm happy for you. And the I put the link to your website in the comments here. Thank so you. everybody can find that there. And um, if you please share it with someone that you know that may have lost, um, whether it's a husband or a wife, um, because you you don't know you know when they're going to be ready right and willing to um accept or or be open to that type of support you know and uh it can make all the difference in the world like it has for marie so yes um so thank you for being here i really appreciate you and how you show up and what you offer to this world thank and you jen you're welcome and please everybody click on her website and we'll see you next time Bye.